huge, the Sahrawi population now has become flooded with, with Moroccans. So is it possible to have a referendum at this point, given what Morocco has done? This is a question that I think it should be, um, and this is my personal opinion. There has been a couple of contradictions surrounding, okay, uh, in fact, I've had this discussion with Moroccans myself when it got to the point where, okay, this, the, the, the card, uh, the time card that Morocco have been playing with is a, a calculated risk that they have been wanting to win or twist the voters for this referendum should it take place toward the settlers. Now, the agreement from the beginning was to identify who was eligible for votes. And I think if Morocco was really into the peace process, if they ever, from the very beginning, wanted some sort of referendum to take place, they, they would have done, they would have, let's say, compromised maybe 10 years ago. That will give them about 20 years worth of uh, moving settlers and whatever comes out of that should be, should be discussed and agreed upon on the negotiation table. If we agree on a referendum between the two parties, between Morocco and the Polisario, if they agree on the referendum, they will have to agree on the process of collecting this, conducting this referendum. Morocco, on the other hand, what is they, what they are trying to do to basically break anything related to the who is eligible, and this is the same game that played from the beginning, who is eligible for the voting? The Sahrawi people who lived in there, who have been recorded under the Spanish census. And to this day, these people still exist. The Sahrawi people who fled, the Sahrawi people who still live in the refugee camp, they still identify those Sahrawis. To my understanding, everyone else is a settler. Yes, you might bring the card saying there have been a lot of settlers who were born and raised here. That's not, an, I don't think that's, that's, that's a justification for, and this is like you mentioned earlier when it comes to comparing the, the conflict or the, the occupation in either sides in uh, the occupied Palestine versus the occupied Western Sahara. This is the same two faces of the same coins. It's all about moving settlers, occupying more lands, playing with, uh, with, the, with refer in Western Sahara case, with referendum census. There is a step that they need to agree on is that let's, let's hold the referendum. The next step will be the UN already had a process that started 20 years ago, should be followed. And um, I think from there, it, it will be very clear who will choose what. And if Morocco really wanted, they had faith in this process, they would have taken that into consideration. Instead, they still don't even trust the process that they're not interested in. At a time when we've seen, um, you know, extremism and terrorism um, in response to foreign occupation, colonialism, uh, exploitation, um, brutal wars, uh, we, we see um, uh, violent responses to uh, neo-colonial enterprises. Um, the Sahrawi patience is, is really remarkable. How much more can the Sahrawi people take particularly given that we are looking at a situation of ethnic cleansing. I think the Sahrawis, like you said earlier, they've been in a way cornered. They've, they've put their faith in the international community, international legality, in the hope that their right will be and the promises will be fulfilled to choose their future on a, a self or referendum or self-determination um, via referendum. The Sahrawi people, and like Muhammad said, the majority of them, the majority of them um, see that the only outcome is hostility. See that in this day and age, the peaceful is not rewarded and the aggressor is heard and destabilizing or um, is basically picking up arms is the only way for you to be heard. And we've seen this, we've seen how, how many people, how many outlets have covered Western Sahara over the last few days, simply because a real violation of international law took place. It's very sad to see that the people of Western Sahara have been put into this situation. And yes, Morocco have been playing, there is a project they've been going to make sure to um, 
Moroccanize the territory. Make sure that the Sahrawi identity is wiped. Make sure that the anything that symbolizes the Sahrawi people, if it can be bought, it should be basically killed in a sense. So looking at the Moroccan project right now, it's an expansionist project that always existed. Morocco with its allies, recently with the current US administration, they are doing anything possible to basically um, tell the world that Western Sahara doesn't exist. After failing diplomatically, after failing against, in almost every effort they put, they failed. What they led to is an illegal recognition from the current outgoing president of the United States, making it very dangerous for the Sahrawi people in the occupied territory. Let's not forget that in addition to the industry, in addition to the exploration of natural resources, there is also the human rights violation piece of this whole conflict. There are people from the occupied territories who don't have the freedom to speak, the freedom to protest. And if they do speak against the, the, Moroccan, uh, the Moroccan occupation, the results is being thrown in jail, being tortured, and your family also being threatened. This is have been reported by various organizations. And let's also not forget that the people of Western Sahara, especially the occupied territory, is the one among the very few regions around the world that where journalists and international observers are not allowed to enter. This is not an example that the US, this is definitely not the example that the US have been advocating in its foreign policy. And like Mohammed said earlier, and um, in reference to John Bolton uh, article that President Trump have no idea what Western Sahara is, apart from selling or trading the people of Western Sahara future in a in a pro quo, basically a trade in the people of Western Sahara, even though exactly quid pro quo um, type of scenario. So the people of Western Sahara are facing the type of call it ethnic cleansing. It's been an ongoing process for a long time. Their identity is being suppressed under any circumstances. Human rights violation is reported on a daily basis. If this is not the result, if this is N plus 20 to 30 to 40 years of peaceful resistance, if these are not the example of a peaceful effort, a peaceful intentions, then the people of Western Sahara, like I said earlier, they are cornered and they're left with no option but to pick up arms. And they rather really be wiped off face of the earth fighting for their rights than just being, um, you know, sitting in the refugee camps where everyone else out there opening consulates in their land, yet knowing that the international community is against what's happening and nobody's doing anything about it. I believe in the power of solidarity. I believe in the power of informing the public. Um, and I think in the short term, apart from hoping that the next administration reverse this action is to join effort together with all the organization who have um, stood against the injustices around the world, against the occupations, colonization in support for the people of Western Sahara and stand by them in these very hard times because the people of Western Sahara, if they have proved anything, is that they are a peaceful people that they have fought peacefully, that they have proven to the world that they are a people to, be, uh, to have solidarity with.